Okay, I was going to do range testing today on this uh, 20 amp hour battery that I tested and it's actually only 15 amp hour. But um, you see this chain line's crooked. It wants to pull in towards the frame on the chain ring. And I just got this today, the uh, Luna Eclipse chain ring. So I'm going to do this instead, change this uh, chain ring. So what happens is when I try to go to the, the largest gear back here, this pulls off the chain ring. And it, uh, I'm going to try to put this onto the bike and see if I can get a view. Here, I'll turn it this way. See if I can get a view of this while I uh, spin the motor and, and see if it will jump off on camera. But it'll jump off. If you try to go to the higher gears, I'll see if I can catch it. So right now I'm going to hook it up a few gears and we'll see. Okay. Turn the rub. There it goes. Okay, so it's off. So I don't want that to happen anymore. I want to be able to use all 10 gears. I'm going to just leave the chain like that because... I'm going to take the crank arm off and uh, pull the sprocket off here, the chain ring, and put this new Luna Eclipse on here. So I'll see if I can, uh, well here, first of all, I'll show you the, there's the Luna Eclipse chain ring. It's a 42 tooth and what you get is the chain ring. And the sprockets attached to it and uh, you get those five allen key bolts that's what you get and it's pretty deep compared to the stock one it drops it in um, I think it's somewhere around 24 millimeters it's supposed to drop it in so it should get a little bit better should get a little bit better that chain line nice and straight I hope when it's in the middle sprocket at the back so I've uh, I loosened the crank arm a little bit already and I got a 14 millimeter wrench a 16 millimeter wrench crank remover tool a four millimeter allen wrench and an eight millimeter. So we'll see if we can get this all off here. This is the eight millimeter. Still kind of tight. Okay, it goes this. Okay, so with that, and I got a four millimeter on a drill so I can get these other little ones off quicker. This is the uh, crank remover tool or crank arm, so it goes in. This big one here, I think it goes clockwise. And it's a, a 16 millimeter on the big one. I don't think you need it super tight, but tighten a bit. And then this one's 14. So let's spin this around. This is the one that. This is the crank arm off. How did you tighten it? Let's see. Hopefully it's working. It's getting pretty tight. I'm not sure. If it's, uh, there's an adapter piece I just put on the end. I don't know if it should be on there or not. 
I'm going to pull it off because it doesn't feel like it's coming off. So let's see here. I put this piece on here. I don't know if I need it. It felt like I was hitting something solid. I think I might need just this. Just this going in. Because this, uh, I'm pretty sure it was catching on something in there. See if this is better. So. Yeah, this feels better. It feels like it's coming off. So you don't need that piece on there for the Bafang crank arm anyways. This is the stock crank arm that comes with the Bafang. I took the XT set off with the cassette that was on there. So that is off of there. Okay, so now I think I've loosened three of these flies here just to I'll use the drill to get them out quicker. Okay, that one's tight. Okay. Now I'll use the new The new ones that came with the Luna chain ring. Yeah, they look a little longer, the new ones. Okay. So I'll show you the difference between the stock the thing bolts and the Luna. See that, but uh, let's see here. You can get a view side by side. They're about, I don't know, an extra quarter of an inch, maybe, maybe uh, three or four millimeters. They're a little bit longer. But we'll use we'll use these ones. No. See if this one comes off yeah, nice and easy. And actually, while I got this one off, I'll hold it up. I'll throw these. Screws in this can. So I'll hold this up here. This is the stock 42 Bafang chain ring. And it has a bit of offset, but not not nearly enough. And then I'll hold this one up here. I don't know what kind of angle I can get. But you can see it. It's a lot deeper than the stock one. So it's definitely going to improve. It definitely should improve things. I'm hoping I can use all 10 gears. So we'll set that on there. I don't know if the chain's got to go all the way in. Or what? I might have to actually take it off this way. Put it this way. Put this on there. Line it up with the holes. So I'm not hitting the uh, chain stay, so that's 
that's good. I don't know if they're right on there or not. Okay, let's see here. There. Okay. Oh. Lock it on there. So it has little lock washers. I didn't put any Loctite on here. I'm going to make sure everything works good on a test drive first. And then I'll pull it off. I'll pull these screws out again. Put some Loctite on here. I guess uh, I'll have to put the chain on the chain ring before I put the crank arm on or I'll have difficulty putting the chain on. So as soon as I get these tight, I'll put the chain on there. And maybe I'll do a test spin, see if it holds where it wasn't holding, where it was pulling the chain off. I think I was on the biggest, yeah, I was on the biggest, uh, the 36 tooth at the back when it pulled off so we'll see if it'll just stay on there now I have to direct tighten it up I got the clutch set low so it's just it'll just skip one thing I should go across the car tire okay not too tight, but on there. No, okay. Oh, that's four millimeter Allen wrench. I'll go over these again. I'm gonna do the lock tight. Make sure they're good enough for a ride right now. Okay. That should be good. And we'll put the chain on here. The bike's not 100% stable right now, so. And this is a 10 speed, so this uh, sprocket's supposed to be good for up to 10 speeds. Let's see. Okay, that's on there now. And the chain line looks quite a lot straighter. Quite a lot better. So I'm going to do a spin just to quickly test it. My hands are a little greasy now. But yeah, right now it's on the biggest and it's not pulling off. It sounded a little bit clicky. And it, it's off, like I can see it's still, it still needs to go more if it was going to be straight. But this is on the biggest. It should be straight when it's in the middle, so I'll drop it down a couple here. And see what it looks like in the middle. Okay, now we're in the middle. And it actually looks uh, pretty straight. Like it could still probably go, I could probably go another uh, half inch. So it's still going to line up with the smaller, um, the 11 tooth better than it lines up with the 36 by the looks of it. So uh, if uh, if I could drop it in another five millimeters, maybe I'd be, almost be hitting the motor right here. So you can't go much more. Like if you could get it a little bit deeper, it would probably be perfect. On a, this is a 92 bottom bracket on a giant trance and it's got uh, spacers on the other side here pushing the motor off to the left of the bike 
and uh, yeah, it's close. I think I can probably use it in the 30s on the on the largest, but it might it's still kind of clicky. So we'll see. I'll I'll kind of give a review on on how it works when I ride it, and uh, I'm going to be doing a range te test on this 20 amp hour battery. I want to see how many watt hours it uses to go. Uh, I, I want to run the bike right from 58.8 volts down to when the bike shuts off. So right to not, it won't be right dead, but the bike should shut off somewhere around 45 or 44 volts. So it, it's still got to, you know, over 10%. So it's not going to really hurt the battery, hopefully. And uh, the battery is considered dead at 42 volts. The bike should shut it down before 42, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to try that this weekend, make a video, see just how much range I get. This battery, I tested it, and it's 15 amp hours actual. So we'll see how many actual amp hours I can use because it won't be the full 15. It'll be probably 20% less than that. And we'll kind of calculate everything from there. But anyways, so here's the the Luna Eclipse chainring. It definitely improved things because it didn't jump off on the on the 36 tooth, and it looks a lot straighter. But it still could go more. But it can't go much more. It would hit if you went a half inch. You'd probably be hitting the motor before you'd actually hit the chainstay on this bike. You'd be hitting the motor right here. So, and it's got it's got a little bit more room. It's got about half an inch. You can go about half an inch here, and here it'd be a little less than half an inch, three eighths, maybe. So I'll put this uh, crank arm back on, and we'll try this bike out. See how everything works. I'm not going to put everything super tight right now. This will just be for a test drive. Everything seems to be fitting. I kind of like the looks of it. Maybe a little too flashy for this bike, but oh well, I can always paint it a dark gray or something to match the bike. I don't mind it. I'll probably clean this chain right now and then uh, oil it before I go up in this ride. I know Roxy wants to go for a run. But anyways, that's the Luna Eclipse chain here. Thanks for watching. Okay, just a quick update on this Luna chain ring. It's uh, working pretty good. I, I can use all 10 gears, and it's uh, been reliable so far. It hasn't jumped the chain off. It's not making any strange noises. And uh, it's actually, it feels a lot smoother in the high gears now. Look on the 11 tooth, it's super smooth. Like it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I don't think I need to change anything, so I can probably just Loctite it on there and drive right on the bike. But yeah, the uh, Luna Eclipse 42 tooth works pretty good on a Giant Trance 2012 with a 92 millimeter uh, press fit bottom bracket. It's a, a good purchase, I can tell already. I like the improvement. Okay, thanks for watching.